for me. Ah, cheers. Hi, welcome everybody. I have with me uh, Jakub, who I'm sure you all remember and have great affection for, and I'm so pleased to see him back here after a little hiatus. And we're going to jump in with a little bit of a freestyle. We've got a couple of topics we want to cover, but um, he's such a good speaker that hopefully I'll get a word in. Over well, I hope you. I don't lose my chance. But uh, <laughs> peace and blessings of Christ be to all of you uh, in so-called films, the audience, all you Christians, the apologists uh, worldwide. To those of you in the Discord groups that have been helping us with uh, different knowledge on the apologetics or knowing about the um, Quranic exegesis, uh, what we should do, all of you that are helping uh, against the Muslims, well, not I want to say helping against them, helping against them, Islam, a, a, against Islam, and helping the Muslims come out of the uh, deception of Allah, as uh, sure. Christian, Christian Prince. Prince's book would uh, mention. Yes, everybody that leaves comments, you're all part of this army, an army of uh, body of Christ. Yes, and online. to talk about the body of Christ, I think I'm going to reflect first with Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to. 47 Excellent. and this is um, before Jesus ascended to heaven he said a few instructions to his disciples and there were 500 witnesses as well in this uh, uh, region so we have witnesses to this unlike yes. um, the one man um, show in the Quran so this is what Jesus said in verse 44 of Luke chapter 24 and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you and that these things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. I'll stop here first. So the law of Moses, um, we see a prophet like um, Moses will come yes. in Deuteronomy. So Jesus confirmed he was that prophet yes. like Moses. So we definitely know that uh, Muhammad is not that prophet. For sure. Uh, because Jesus said it with his own words. Um, and in the prophets, so we talk about the book of Isaiah, yes, book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Um, yes. which are the Genesis uh, uh, foreshadows yeah. him, and as does Exodus as well. Precisely. So most of the books of the Old Testament also have uh, every single one of them yeah, has Christ in it. Three hundred and seventeen prophecies in in total for Christ. And finally, and he said in the Psalms, Psalm twenty-two, it talks about the crucifixion, and uh, when he says Eli, Eli, Sabakani, if I'm correct. Eli, 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 Lema Sabakani. Uh, thank you. That's somebody that's actually trying to speak Hebrew. But what I would say there is that, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a very powerful psalm. Psalm 22, anybody in deep misery that needs the Lord to uplift them, please recite Psalm 22. I'll just interject, and what I would say is that when um, Islamic apologists come and say, well, who was Jesus speaking to on the cross and why had his father forsaken him? Jesus isn't accusing the father of forsaking him in the slightest. He is drawing the attention of the crowd around him back to the psalm to show that his death and resur eventual resurrection though, but his death is prophesied and the manner in which he is killed is prophesied before crucifixion was um, a, a widely held or even ever practiced um, method of killing people so he talks about his bone the psalm i'm sorry the psalmist speaks of his bones being broken being surrounded by dogs his uh, garments having a lots cast for them which for sure happened to christ um and i'm going to give you back to Jakub. yes and uh, i think it's important because he also talks about them casting lots for his yes. garments uh, which uh, we see happen in uh, Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It's explained in, in that scenario. So I'll just finish off with verse 45 to 47. Then open up their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, that thus it is written and thus it is behold, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. That's the crucifixion. Yes, and, and the resurrection. Yep. Precisely, verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And verse 48, which I didn't mention before. And ye are witnesses of these things. And there's other witnesses besides the disciples, yes. 500. So this is Christ. This is the gospel yes. in, in just in a, a few nutshell. verses, in a yes. nutshell. So when Muslims say the Injil, some magical book that uh, was written by some uh, Aladdin. Or, no, we don't believe that nonsense. Jesus is the Injil. Yeah, yeah. He Jesus is the good is the, news. Yes. Also, I would say that in the Greek, the, the word there for nations is uh, ethnos, which is ethnicities. So it's not about preaching to all countries with their borders, even though Acts 17.26 speaks about God giving people their borders. What it's saying is that all manner of men from all lineages and uh, birthrights are to be uh, called to be disciples of Christ. Therefore, that negates the Islamic idea of um, purely Arabic book being given to the Arabs um, or of Israel. Israel remains God's chosen people and remains 
unfaithful. Unfortunately, most of the Old Testament is about God's faithfulness to them, despite and in the face of their unfaithfulness and their, you know, uh, just running around building cows and, and, and doing all sorts of nonsense. So the underlying theme of that is God's unchanging word. His unchanging word is Christ. In Hebrews, we are told that Christ was made lesser than the angels, but we're also told that he is not of the angels. He is eternal. And the father in uh, Hebrews 1 calls the son God. So there is a clear reference. When anybody says, and where does it say Jesus Christ is God? That's, it's right there in Hebrews 1. And he's the almighty, according to Revelation, and he is the mighty God, and he will be called eternal father, according to Isaiah. That's not to say that he is the father for any modalists listening. That is to say that he will be called the eternal father, and a, the Jews would never claim that a child would be called God. And yet, here he is, a son is given to us, a child is born, and the governance is, governance is on his shoulders because he is God. His name means he will save his people, like Yeshua. Yahweh, yeah, yes. Yeshua saved. So that is, uh, in simple context, the gospel and why we as Christians come. And um, I think the first thing before we go into the main topic, which is yep. going to be the Charlie Head... Head, head dose stabbings, yep. yeah. And the stabbings and the cartoon and all the um, madness of Islam dealing with the, its lack of dealing with freedom of speech. Yes. But before we get into that, on, on the Christian denomination, what I'll try and say is that um, as Christians and as believers, we all have our own personal relationship with Christ. Yes, so amen. So I'm always aware, and I'll say, when you as Christians dialogue with another Christian, remember to show that person love, even if you have differences. Uh, try and remember that the spirit of truth is Christ. Try and develop your relationship with Jesus. Just don't pick up the Bible as a literal context. Get the spiritual meaning behind certain things. Know that some other people, the, uh, certain aspects of the Bible relate to them differently than to you or myself, um, depending on what we're going through in life. So yes, we have different denominations. Different people have different ways of faith, but there is only one God in heaven. Yes. There's only one son that we can go to this God through, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. who is God in the flesh that manifested in the flesh yes. to um, give us the gift of salvation. The, the whole point yes. of us as being a Christian community, regardless of denomination, is to understand this point of the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, well, which Muslims Well, What I'd have. like to say on that note is, and I've said it in a previous video even today, is that I have a few times when I've been speaking and I've felt the Holy Spirit because I don't know what I'm talking about and I think, oh, that sounded good and then I have to listen again, so I know it's not me. Um, I've had this uh, very clear image in my head of, um, kind of looks like Game of Thrones to be honest, but it's like a stronghold and a courtyard and a walled enclosure. And I believe that it's, it represents the kingdom and um, you know, the blood of the martyrs is like holding the stones together, the, the, the spirit of truth is there. And yet surrounding that are the satanic forces, whether you want to call them, you know, like other theists and also those who, like just people who aren't saved. And we're told in the Bible that outside will be whoremongers and uh, magicians and whomever else um, is unfortunate enough. Yes. So what I'm saying is in my mind, they're beating the, the portcullis down, the door down. And yet inside, Christians are arguing about Nicaea and they're wondering whether, uh, you know, the father is the son and the son is the, like it's that's not an irrelevant question. That's an absolutely essential question. But we have to take stock that the Bible tells us the Bible we all hold dear. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you would like to learn about another denomination other than your own, that's excellent. Go at it as a Christian. Go at it with love, um, because even if you consider them your enemy, you're still commanded to love them. And love covers a multitude of sins. So whether you believe that, you know, uh, particular forms of worship are unchristian, thank goodness that you're not the judge, I'm not the judge, Jacob isn't the judge, the judge is Jesus Christ, he will judge us all and he will say to some of us, you cast out demons in my name and yet I do not know you, get behind me. So I guess my advice for what it's worth, it's not asked for, is look to your own soul first, check the speck in your own eye, check that you're not hating another Christian because it's so easy to say they're not a Christian. Like it's not for us to decide, but for me personally, if someone tells me they're a Christian, I can't even point to their behavior and say, no, you're not, because we are told to love our enemies and that is how we must love ourselves, basically, because I can lie and I could fornicate and I could steal. And yet I don't stop loving myself as in wanting good things for myself. And that is how God loves me. He, he can't love me any more than dying for me alone. And he can't love me any less because of my actions. So 
please be aware that whilst not everyone who claims Christ is a Christian, belonging to a certain church could just be as simple as you've grown up in that tradition. And similar to politics, no one is a perfect conservative or wholly um, left wing or, you know, we have an amalgamation of our views, which we grow up with, some we discard and others we incorporate as and when they make sense to us. And the same with Christianity. As the spirit reveals more to you, your discernment will change and some things you will change your opinion on, but that doesn't mean you're any less saved or any more saved because there's salvation or there's hell. Sorry. Well, I'll give you a attack from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So seven things that the Lord hates, abomination, a proud look, pride, you've got to get rid of it. A lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So we as Christians, we all have an individual journey. Yes. Um, it's important that we try and build our relationship with Christ. So if you're having problems in theological arguments with other Christians, perhaps your knowledge of Christ is not paramount. You could look at it that way rather than looking at the other Christian as having a difference. Yes. I had a, a, a lovely discussion uh, sh spreading love with the fellow missionaries here today. And one of the things I spoke to others is that it's important that we look at criticisms and objectify them in a way that we can see through them and see, oh, is there an error here or is there something we can learn? So if somebody says something in love, obviously we'll make a amends towards that. But it's important that we focus on the scripture. If you want to speak to God, you can speak to him through your book. And this is the Bible we can speak to the Lord. Yes. He gives us answers to a lot of things that deal with our faith. So try and get studious in the Bible and look at it for meaning. Where you lack meaning, pray and the Lord, ask and it shall be given you, yes. seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Yes. All I can say is that what I've learned in my Christian journey is sometimes we have to take responsibility for our own faith without looking at the denominational aspects and other people's That's way correct. of interpreting. Yeah. And then we can, because look at yourself before you reflect yeah. on others. I'm so. going to wrap this up for a second okay. and we're going to come back with another video about the recent events. Um, so God bless you and we'll see you in a minute. God bless. Hi everybody, welcome back again. We've got a very brief time, it seems, in order to uh, chat briefly about the events of Paris very recently, uh, the Charlie Hebdo again murders or stabbings actually. And also I'd like to touch upon freedom of speech and what's happening in the park very recently. And uh, I think there's plenty actually, so yeah. Okay, so I'll just uh, add on. So there's three topics, Charlie Hebdo, yep. the, uh, the murders, the initial murders of yes. the number of journalists there. Then um, recently on the trial date, four people were stabbed outside. Yes. And then we'll talk about freedom of speech. And one thing you were talking about before, uh, speech uh, can be truth in the ca case of Christ. We believe in Jesus uh, yes. as our Lord. So if uh, somebody says something bad about Christ, we see it as a blasphemy, we'll be offended, but we would not feel the need to be violent or No, the extreme. Bible says you yes. can uh, you can insult Christ, but you must not blaspheme the spirit. And blaspheme. even so, God will will give the retribution. It's not for us to meet out yes. any punishment. So because I, I cannot do um, an act of God's judgment. Yes. I don't feel as Vengeance a human is being. His. Vengeance yep. is mine, saith the Lord, uh, Paul to the Romans. Um, so now, and the third issue was, um, talk about truth, uh, uh, St. Augustine said something, because we as Christians, we stand on the truth. We have a confidence that most uh, other religions would not have, like we have as missionaries. Yeah. And our confidence, like St. Augustine said, the truth is like a lion, set it free, it will defend itself. Yes. So we know that we can just tell the gospel, um, or whatever, uh, yeah. the truth of the scriptures, Jesus' truth. And we know that um, when people don't agree with our faith and they go, it doesn't oh, make you it know what, we're going to check re Roman records, they'll find out Christ existed in yes. Roman records. They check the Bible account, they see that it's chrono uh, chrono chrono chronologically yeah, in line with the times of history. Yes. Um, however, the Quran is always oh, all, over all over the place. The place. And yeah. once you start criticizing it, then violence has to be a measure of yes. the Mohammedans to yeah. stifle um, the content of their thought. analysis. <laughs> yeah, thought. So what, um, I'd like to ask you one question. Um, freedom of speech. Now, we are in a place of free speech in yes. the UK, which is Speaker's Corner. And um, if I'm correct, martyrs were killed here. Very, Christian. very close by. Yeah, very we passed it. A Christian martyr. So we as Christians here, we can speak on the authority that a Christian, mar Christian martyrs were slain here 
for believing in the uh, testimony of Christ. They didn't hurt anybody or harm anyone. No, they, they had a want, slightly different yes, doctrine. And uh, they were murdered for it. And yes. um, we Martin. have that free speech. So now we have a lot of Muslims here uh, trying to, uh, we had a sister, uh, uh, so had, we have a sister here, carried out. It's, other people have done videos, I don't want to touch too much. But she was exercising a free speech. Yes. One was an allegory, a parable with a holy Quran just to show Kadir's the mistake. Holes in the and then the second yep. one was the Charlie Hebdo cartoon, Cartoons, yep. showing in a free speech area, this should be allowed mm -hmm. content. But she was dragged out for her own safety. Now, this is a problem. Freedom of speech was not maintained. No. Uh, the problem being that in the Public Order Act, Section 29J, it says this act will not be used to prohibit the insulting, ridiculing or haranguing, I think, or harassment, something like that, of um, for, for religious purposes. So it's the obligation and it's got a judicial precedent as well as the act itself that says um, it's your responsibility to move away. If you don't like what's being said, go somewhere else, basically. So um, the case where three Christians were preaching and they were physically attacked, the, the onus of the law is always the attacker is the lawbreaker. No words you can say apart from obviously kill him if you really think the person's going to kill somebody is illegal. And can we just add on that? That's British law and British yes. law comes from the Magna Carta and it's yes. in, uh, strongly Freedoms. in a Christian tradition. Yes. Uh, so you can yeah, see Christians the wisdom. Influence. Yeah, Christians influence. Yeah. So you can see the wisdom there. If you're offended by something, walk away. And uh, it's your and we, problem. Yes. And we as children, when we're growing up, our parents, I'm not sure my parents told me that um, turn the other cheek as well. Yeah, they didn't tell Christian. me anything because okay. I didn't know your parents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing that we also learn is that um, if you find something offensive, um, you can tend to either walk away yeah. or ignore it. Sticks and or stones will break for the my person. bones, but names will never hurt me. Yeah. So if somebody says, oh, I don't, um, let's just say you are a dog. Okay, fantastic. You can go and thump him up and probably end up in prison. Or you can and just you ha Sorry, you have to value away. the opinion of the person speaking even to be offended. Offense yes. can't be given. It can only be taken. What I'd like to say... I, like the family know that recently I've been doing Christian persecution videos and if you are okay even in the slightest with Nigerians being macheted, dismembered, raped, set on fire, buried alive, uh, burnt out of their homes, if you're okay with Indonesian Christians being uh, like uh, kidnapped, yeah, if you're okay with well. churches being set on fire, if you're okay with a girl called Vera who was 22, a microbiology student being raped and battered to death in a church and you're not all right with a book being torn or having a hole put in it, I would say the problem is solely yours. It's nothing to do with me. And yet, this place of free speech is so very important because even though in Britain we uphold the right uh, to say what you feel, this place is enshrined in law as a specific... This is private land. This is a royal park. It's not public. Um, and therefore, it can... Uh, you know, can suffer as the result of the violence that flares up from time to time. You know, most people shake hands afterwards. But chanting kill her um, at two minutes, I think, 20 of a certain video is not acceptable. And it's not OK to call in like young boys to come and harass women. That's just like a dog move in well, anyone's Well, we book. did go up to something about democracy in Europe and um, the advent of first free speech. Uh, we look at um, the creation of the Greek Empire, first of all, yep. and we spoke about um, a few of the philosophers in the past. Yep, Aristotle, uh, uh, Socrates, so, Plato. Yeah, we use a lot of Socrates' uh, methods around here, yeah. by the way. So the, um, we had the ancient Greeks, they were known, very learned, they were known for discussing, and by the intellectual arguments of people, of society Paul, developed. Of St. Paul. Paul went to the home of logic, as it were, with the Logos and he Christianized the area. Yeah, he was one of the best evangelists of all time and God put him through trials and persecution, put him in prison and yet still Romans 8.28 comes to fruition because he's chained to, to members of the Roman Empire who he can evangelize well, the Bible to. Does tell her, God tells us, come to me and reason. Yes. Uh, the God of the Bible says, reason with me and I'll reason with you. Now, so we looking now at the curtailing of free speech we have to understand that the um, Quranic exegesis is not for free speech. It says seek no questions, ask no, ask no questions, seek no answers. Yeah. Um, it, it puts a line of ignorance. However, we live in a modern world. Whether you are Muslim or not, you have to understand that people have different views. Yeah, this is a reality sure. of the world. Yes. So we have to understand that um, if you are offended by something, you have to take it yourself. That's you that's got the problem, not the yeah. other person. Nobody's ever died time. of being offended. Now, some people will say, oh, in a smart aleck way. If somebody said a racial slur, well, there's criminal 
uh, implications. Aspect, implications. Yeah. If I say, oh, I'm going to kill you or stab you outside, now that is a threat. Yes, it's that a threat a to kill and that's illegal. Yeah, so that's not freedom of speech. That is threatening of, of violence, which yeah. under uh, different You're not aspects of the You're not supposed to shout law. fire yeah. in a crowded yeah. theatre is the exactly. famous one. Unless yeah. there's a fire. So it's not always illegal. So let, let's take Don't keep, um, silly kind of arguments because this is what we'll get from commentary, uh, commentary that people say, oh, you're being racist, Islamophobic. No, we have in a culture of um, journalism where journalists should feel free to reflect anything that they feel about Hopefully the truth, but... Mm. Well, they don't, but yeah. the point is, is that uh, if you want to read trash newspapers like The Sun and open up to page three, that's good enough for you. But there are some people that read some independent thinking magazines that have intelligent questions. And unfortunately, some of these magazines do satire as cartoons. Yes. And, and that's Hebdo, fine, Private yeah. Eye yeah. is Private uh, Eye. particularly does so that sort of they thing, they do a the cartoon that people find offensive. I read the cartoon, I didn't really find anything too offensive. I think, uh, but depiction of an image of a guy that's a prophet, that upset a few people and it led to murders of human. Human lives were destroyed, families lost their loved ones. Now, who has gained in this? Uh, some of them have been incarcerated, some of the assailants were killed. But four more people fell victim to stabbings. And um, for those of you to, re um, to recover from a stabbing injury would take significant part. But where did these guys get the exegesis from? It's the Quran. Muslims will lie and say, but there's so many verses, 812, 929, uh, Quran 911, which inspired um, the 9-11 attacks. Read the tafsirs and the hadith if you don't believe my, my there's the book of jihad, it's a whole book of t uh, a Not series bedtime of things. reading, to be honest. Uh, Mohammed uh, killed a, a woman, an um, 80 something year old woman. I think oh, the poetess? Yes, the, the one poetess. who. Yeah. So, this is the tradition of the uh, Islamic exegesis. Now, a lot of people say, ah, oh, should I look at my Muslim neighbor and be afraid? No, no, not at all. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the exegesis of the people that committed a crime. So always put the relevance to the people that committed a crime, not to the community. But let's because not say we they were mentally ill either. Let's no. not jump to the conclusion that they were crazy. Other than that, they believe that God ordains uh, physical violence. When our God tells us, the, the one true God says, we fight not against the flesh, but against uh, principalities and powers of darkness. So it's not our job to go around um, like fighting other people. And that's not to say that Christians are pacifists. Of course, there are valid theological reasons for, um, for yeah, for just war. But those are deemed fit by um, ecumenical council and by theologians. That's not for us to decide a one-man crusade. I'm also going to play devil's advocate um, using an atheist tip. He doesn't care about Jesus. He doesn't yep. care about Muhammad. But he wants to make fun of both. Okay. So um, he, he draws pictures. Are you talking of, about Steve? Um, no, sorry. Well, to, to, well, I'm not going to obey. He, he follows me on Twitter and I don't want to upset him. He might, he might report my tweet. Uh, but um, uh, a perfect example is that um, he makes a joke about um, both um, Christ and Muhammad. Now, I doubt that any Christians are going to send some uh, people heavies. to heavies to <laughs> Maybe uh, just send me up. round with uh, a box yeah, of chocolates. Or somebody. <laughs> or some uh, pigeon drops some bird stool on him. That might be the worst that happens. But somebody else that would go on Muhammad, he has to take sincerely that there are some elements of the Islamic exegesis that would put him in danger. Yeah, they advocate violence for sure. And I think that the it's somehow, like the answer lies in the fact that the truth cannot be diluted or chipped away at. So the truth is always the truth, the 100% truth. There's no a little bit true. There's a there's a part of, there's one whole piece of truth surrounded by lies, fair enough. But the truth is the truth. So when my truth is attacked, even if I can't verbally defend Christ to the extent which another apologist may be able to, maybe I might uh, seem to be bested or be bested in a debate. I know that the truth remains the truth. Jesus Christ is still the truth, whether I'm having a bad day or not. So the Holy Spirit is the one who conforms us to the truth, to the um, to the truth, to peace, patience, kindness, mercy, long suffering. Um, and yet those fruits of the Spirit are not found For mentioned. those that don't understand what long suffering, long suffering is the old uh, biblical word for patience. And, and that's what has not happened here with the Mohammedan audience to the Charlie yeah. Hebdo. There hasn't been patience that, oh, people criticize religion in modern terms. Yeah. A lot of people on the internet, a lot of people don't believe in um, A lot of people say, believe religion. in being and, triggered and safe spaces. It doesn't mean so it's a real So the importance thing. of uh, uh, this community and uh, the Western world now being in a free speech area, having a missionary dragged out for her own safety because she said things that some people would not would take offence to. Um, there's a time in your point that you have to mature. And um, unfortunately, Islam is not helping you to mature. 
uh, people are going to say things in life that you will not like. Yeah. And there are many people have said things in my life that I don't like. I cannot go around kicking them or beating them up or stabbing them or burning their homes down. It doesn't work like that. You will not silence dissenters. More likely when you actually provoke, you're going to create enemies. And this is the problem. The Quran was made for an error of falsehood in a region that was already warlike and uh, people were very ignorant, very backward. Hey, they didn't, yeah, they didn't have a, a structured society. They were growing up as um, Bedouin nomads in no man's land where there was no kind of uh, industry besides religion, uh, warfaring, um, banditry and slavery. Um, the Western world is not built on that foundation now. It's a place of free thought, free speech, uh, where people have different ideas, where they can challenge the order of things, where people challenge the government. Boris Johnson has more jokes you run at him. I don't see Boris Johnson taking a pickaxe and trying to take people out. No, he has a he has a self-worth himself. He might be offended by things, but he has to take it on his own. I would chin. say that to, to, to put forward the idea that a certain snapshot of history, i.e. 7th century Arabia, is the modus operandi, like is the thing to be replicated throughout time, is um, at best ill-advised, at worst kind of insane. Um, Christ never said you shall continue to live as people of this era because the church eternal, if you can see it in its glory, has been proclaiming for 2,000 years at least under sufferance, under persecution and in good times and with some questionable practices herself. But the church is not the established council of bishops and archbishops of the Catholic or the Protestant denominations. The church is the body of Christ. The ch true church is the believers and we are called to preach the truth. Whether or not, so when people are arguing amongst themselves Christians about who's right and who's got this, check yourself first. Check you're not living in sin anyway and still preaching a load of, you know, however sound the doctrine is. Okay. If you don't, sorry, if you don't agree with Calvinism, don't agree with it. If you don't want to be a Baptist, God bless you. If you don't want to be a Catholic, don't do it. If you don't want to support Protestantism, good well, luck to you. As long as you're in Jesus, Jesus didn't, sorry, Jesus didn't say, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, repent. Uh, and become baptised unless you believe uh, John Calvin. Like, no, he didn't say that. Well, These are the things you must do to be saved, and the rest is peripheral. I, I think the significance of what you mentioned is when uh, different Christian groups come in uh, a question of arguments between each other. Um, we it's can have differences, and we can reflect our differences in free speech. Whilst loving without, each other. Whilst loving exactly. each other. So uh, the concept of free speech is how society moves. Um, yeah. Having fear in society will not help society to evolve. I've got will a not quote help for us you. To overcome. George um, Orwell I... said, sorry, just it's very quick. The further a society moves from the truth, the more those who speak it will be hated. And we see that clearly with, you know, it was foretold for Christians anyway. But... Yes, but um, I wasn't um, correlating on the truth. I'm talking about freedom of speech because um, the truth to us is Christ. Oh, you should be truth. free to lie as uh, well, yeah, free, for sure. Uh, uh, um, um, I would not advocate that as a Christian. But, what but free I, speech must encompass bad ideas. Um, what I would say is that we have to reflect on two important um, concepts, uh, f the truth and freedom of speech. Now, what I mean is that we're talking about freedom of speech without people um, taking away that right of freedom of speech. And what we're having here is that Islam is encroaching on the Western values. I won't look at the biblical because the biblical aspect is very simple. We have a faith and we believe in that faith, but the faith doesn't deal with freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is a different context because most of the people that will advocate it are not believers in Christ. Yes. In, in the, this country is not a Christian nation. Yeah, you shouldn't nation. have to be a Christian um, The United to States is in not it. a Christian. They will say, but it's not. Most people well, are secular. Well, the church and state are well, separate. Yeah, church and state are separate. So, but in the Mohammedan cause, church oh, and state it's are all the same. One. Yes. And unfortunately, they are trying to incorporate their political aspects of their religion in a European context that has a freedom of speech Shouldn't democracy. Allowed, yeah. And that's never going to work. It's going to create great resentment amongst the indigenous population of Europe. It's going to marginalize Muslims more and put them on their back foot. Um, some of you will say, ah, oh, you don't believe in this. Regardless of what you feel, the tafsir, the hadith, and, the, and everything else that does with the exegesis shows that if you do insult the prophet, there is a right for the, oh, for the believers to uh, retribute. Yeah. And 
You cannot, Pakistan, I cannot in Saudi example. Arabia go and say Jesus is Lord and proclaim on the street. I'll be lynched and murdered. That's a fact. Yeah. So I'm speaking my own belief, but I can't speak it. But uh, Muslims feel they have the right to stop us even preaching the gospel here, which is our freedom of speech. And on top of that, um, attacking people that are actually preaching, um, showing them their exegesis because they're uncomfortable with it. That's well, also, delusion. Not, so I, I think uh, we'll wrap up. But what I'd also say is that if... Um, if your truth is not defensible, if you have to silence your critics, it's from a deep-seated insecurity. Also, um, freedom of speech is paramount in cognitive um, health. So to be able to voice even the most terrible ideas is always preferable to suppressing or repressing speech. And compelled speech is just the same, being forced to call a man a woman or a woman a toaster or whatever goes on nowadays. But the fact is that if you can't voice a terrible idea, no one will hear you say it and with love be able to tell you, brother, like that's really not, not on, and then reason with you. So if you can't speak, you can't think properly. And you will continue to say those things, but they'll be forced underground. And that's where we don't want bad ideas. We want them out in the open so they can democratically and with love be challenged with the truth. So. As um, Idi Amin said, just to conclude my part, I'll do three things. Uh, Idi Amin said uh, something fascinating. He said, uh, freedom of speech, I can guarantee you. Freedom of, after speech, I cannot guarantee you anything. Um, so some people are of the school of thought that freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom to offend. But we're in Speaker's Corner. We're allowed to say anything here because Christian martyrs were laid here. St. Augustine made a very promising uh, statement uh, many centuries ago. Uh, the truth is like a lion. Set it free, it will defend itself. We Christians believe the Bible says that Christ is the spirit of truth, the spirit of prophecy. So we believe we are speaking the truth. So we know that we can speak it and we have nothing to fear. Um, unfortunately, uh, Islam does not have this uh, benefactor. Islam is very clear. Ask no questions, seek no answers. Um, do not um, upset the prophet. I think that's the Surah 3 uh, with questions. That's handy, um, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's kind of weird that um, a religion that is so um, I'll say adventurous with stifling other people's uh, rhetoric. It does not even allow its own rhetoric to be. No, this is not how it works in the modern world with the internet, the Western world. Uh, freedom of speech is very important. Uh, people should be up in arms about what's happened and uh, support the French, support people that want to make cartoons, support people that want to carry Korans with holes, support people that uh, like uh, make origami pigs because it's funny. Big it's up, hilarious. David Wood. Sorry. Uh, when I saw it, I thought. Okay, I thought I was a good joker. This is, I, I've, I've it's dropped trolling my, no, it's level trolling boss. trolling level boss. <laughs> Remember, when you Muslims go out and say, talk about things like golden showers, um, raping people's wives, um, insulting their children. Um, don't be offended don't by be a little tear in a book. By them doing something back. To a book, they too have not a to your wife. Speech. So, or your children. Fantastic. So yep. always remember, be responsible as human beings. Um, attacking people will obviously sometimes lead to people retaliating. Yeah, sure. And that's the reality They'll always be a bigger bully, uh, but, so don't start it. Um, you cannot silence people's words. Um, that is a human right. It's a, it's a human it right. Be. This is why we fought dictatorships from the Nazis. Yep. We fought communism. We yep. fought so many things to keep our freedom of speech. Yep. And we're fighting the Islamo-fascists now with the truth. So um, I'll ask all of you that are Christians and believers, pray for the families of the Charlie Hebdo uh, and those people victims. that have been massacred, yep. the victims. Uh, pray for the Muslims that they see the eyes. You Muslims need to soul search. Um, the Bible tells us by their fruits you shall know them. If your God is so weak and so... Um, he can't uh, take an that insult. He can't even take an insult. He can't defend himself and he can't answer your questions. The God of the Bible says, Reason with me, come and reason. That's why we believe in this God. Uh, Jesus Christ is the only way to Him. Um, I didn't come here to actually preach this one, but it's important that we. That could be a little. <laughs> and remember, all of you Muslims here that are critical in the commentary, this area is where Christian martyrs were slain. Yes. And this is why we have the freedom of speech. So it's because of them you're allowed to talk about your Islam. So glory to God for yeah. His martyrs. I'm going to quickly wrap up and I'm going to say that. Please don't get compassion fatigue. So I've been doing a lot of persecution stuff. I don't feel it. I, I wouldn't mind a little bit, actually. But um, like just with reference to Charlie Hebdo, um, it's been like I've thought it and considered it myself that if there were another attack due to the republication of those same cartoons, 
Christians and non-Christians alike and Muslims and non-Muslims would have less sympathy because they would say, well, look what happened the first time. We can't allow our, our standards to be incrementally lowered so that we are weary and accepting of that. The same with the persecution in Nigeria, Chad, Niger, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Somalia. Like the list is endless. It's not actually, there's a list of 50, but they're not only, like the, it's gradations. 245 million Christians are living in uh, mid to high levels of persecution. That's a big chunk of our brothers and sisters who if they suffer, we suffer as a result. So it's kind of selfish thing. I don't want to suffer. You don't want to suffer unnecessarily unless it's for Jesus. So pull your fingers out people and stop like just going, oh yeah, yeah, it's another persecution thing or it's another guy stabbed by a lone wolf nutter. They're not like lone wolves at all. They're not, they're probably not mentally ill by any psychiatrist standard apart from the belief in um, you know, the, just the denigration and the lack of sanctity of human life, which God gave them and in his good time will be removed from them. And I pray for those attackers. I pray for Boko Haram, ISWAP, Fulani militants, the whole lot of them, the Chinese government. I want the Holy Spirit to show them that my brothers and sisters are not cannon fodder and they're not just pieces of meat and they're certainly not nedges. They are beloved of God and they have the right to be called children of God. I'm ranting and JC's looking at me. And uh, that's me. Yes, amen. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, brother. Good to see you.